Nvidia has started the war. It is on for the future of computing. You want the fastest SSD ever? Well, so Brent's got you covered with the Rocket 4 Plus Destroyer. And you want brand new AMD Ryzen chips? Well, we've got some for you to talk about. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your host, Brett. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet. In case you wanna submit some hot tech news that you want me to cover here on this show, you can do so over on our Discord server, which will be linked in the doobly-doo down below. And we'd love to have you in our community as well as just talk about what you want me to be talking about over here on this show, which we're gonna talk about it. NVIDIA laying the smack down at GDC. The beacons have been lit. Minas Tirith is calling Calling for help, NVIDIA is not, no, they're they're standing alone? Is NVIDIA Mount Doom and Sauron in this m metaphor? I'm not 100% sure. Fool of a took. Anyways, NVIDIA showing off that RTX and DLSS will work on ARM and on Linux. They are pushing forward with a future that is no longer going to be x86 or Windows centric with them showing this off with specifically, it was Wolfenstein Youngblood having both RTX ray tracing as well as DLSS enabled on an ARM CPU. This was a MediaTek processor paired with an RTX 3060 graphics card. This obviously is hearkening to the fact that NVIDIA is trying to purchase arm for roughly $40 billion and take over that entire atmosphere. As we can see from what Apple's doing with their M1 chips, ARM does appear to be the way of the future for at least a large portion of the computing space, both professionals as well as college students, as well as just people who want a cheap, easy to use piece of crap. Well, that's Apple for you. And that's a large chunk of the pie. And if Apple's moving that way, we're starting to see that Qualcomm's getting into the game with x86. Microsoft also pushing that with their SQ two and now it looks like nvidia is coming out and saying hey we're gonna be part of this damn train in fact we're gonna be the damn conductors because we're gonna be the ones who are owning arms so all of this processing that you're doing well it's gonna be on stuff that we own my friends you want a chromebook with rtx of course we'll supply you with that you want your next google phone to have rtx on well we can make that happen we'll just pair up with qualcomm while the indies get in all friendly with samsung because we now we can make it work with arm so we'll leave links in the video the description for you to check this out. This obviously means that NVIDIA is taking seriously the transition towards the future, or it could potentially mean that they are just doing this for brownie points and they don't really care because as soon as they buy ARM, they're gonna shut everybody's projects down and be like, haha, you thought this wasn't gonna be antitrust? Trust nobody, we've got all the power. I think this mostly gets me excited for smaller implementations of what NVIDIA can do on SOCs moving forward in the future of what we're getting with just a ray trace based port portable system. NVIDIA come out with their own console that they can run stuff on, not the other one that I'll never name because they're a giant shady piece of crap company, which NVIDIA is as well, but they never screwed me over personally. And they're not going to screw you over when it comes to getting Windows 11 support because that now exists. I'm uh, talking about not supporting Windows in the previous thing, but now Windows 11 support being added on the latest NVIDIA drivers in case you want those, my friends. In case you want a software update for your car, don't worry. If you spend $10,000 on your Tesla Model 3 or Model Y, boy, howdy, you're going to get the most useless thing that Tesla's released so far, the Smart Shift technology, which determines when your car is going to be in drive or reverse based on context clues and then gives you a little swipey boy right over there on the little menu in case it screws up and misguesses and you just plow right into the pillar right in front of you at Target. You know why Target has those giant red balls? Not because it's for Clifford the Big Red Dog. No, because it, they're trying to protect the damn store for people driving into it. And guess what? If Tesla determines you're trying to go forward when you're trying to reverse, you smack that accelerator because it goes quite quick. You're going straight into the dollar section of spot, my friend. It's not going to be a good time for nobody. Buddy. Anyways, Elon Musk tweeting out that smart shift's gonna come out to all cars that have full self-driving. So in case you spent that money, you can get that technology of your car guessing what you wanna do. And can you guess where I'm going next? That's right, it's to the Crypto Stunks update. Not, not a good day. <laughs> Woo. Uh, Bitcoin down 2.68% in the last 24 hours, almost crossing below $30,000 at 3647 as I'm recording this. Ethereum also having a particularly nasty day, down 4.5% to 1787. Dogecoin also just kind of wetting the bed a little bit, 4.16% down close to being below 17 cents on the day. GameStop not having as bad of a day, closing up 
3% to end at $173.49. AMC having a little bit of a slide, being down roughly 1% to close at $34.62. Not as bad as last week where we were seeing 5 to 10% drops every single day, but I mean, AMC doesn't have much further to fall, being at $34. However, considering they started the year at, you know, like two bucks, I, I think they're still doing all right. You ever get upset about the market? Just zoom out, okay? And if you ever feel like you don't have enough anxiety, zoom in, all right? You need to know microsecond by microsecond, which way is the candle going? Is it burning at both ends? Who knows? Well, Canada's about to burn their electric grid because there's a new company that's bringing in over a million Bitcoin mining rigs from China to Canada so that they can start mining. Optimum Mining Host and BlackRock Petroleum Company are bringing in a million Bitcoin mining rigs, moving them over from China, which is now cracking down on cryptocurrency to a country Country that will do it shortly now soon. In case you didn't see the video that I did over on UFD Tech, which you can watch right up there, we watched as the Malaysian government destroyed over a thousand Bitcoin mining machines, which was absolutely insane, which used as much electricity in a quarter as I use could could use in 1200 years absolutely insane S Canada the renewable somehow okay Canadians are so nice they'll just be like hey it's okay yeah you can go ahead and mine Bitcoin in our <laughs> what oh that's a terrible accent don't do it I can't I can't do a Canuck accent <laughs> that was so bad <laughs> ah! What's so dang bad in a good way is Sabrent's new Rocket 4 Plus Destroyer, which is just a giant adding card that you can slot in a whole bunch of the Rocket 4 Plus drives, which are amazingly fast, by the way. You can get 32 terabytes at 28 gigabytes per second. Tweaktown testing this over, Sabrent tweeting this out. As you can see there, that is some very fast drives, each of them offering anywhere from five to seven gigabytes per second read. When you add eight of them in RAID 0, you can get up to 28,000 megabytes per second which that math doesn't perfectly scale but you could also have some redundancy in there as well okay 16 terabytes and 28 gigabytes per second all right and then it also has some redundancy so that if you lose something you have a little backup yes please all right I just this is gonna cost me more than my entire life's wages ever in all the ones in the future but I so Brent what's up Hot news could use faster SSDs because I process the news faster than a slap chop can process an onion, my friends. Hook me up. And Dish is deciding to process all of its MVNOs and move it over to a completely different mobile network. And in case you're not familiar, an MVNO is just essentially a mobile network that runs off of a bigger company's mobile network. So think Verizon, T-Mobile, and Sprint, and AT&T all have these sub companies. One of them has been a sponsor here on Hot News as well as on UFD Tech. Ting, they got bought out by Dish, which is changing some internal structure. And now it looks like Dish is actually going to be paying AT&T $5 billion so they can be the main carrier of their MVNO networks. Which means that Ting, which I believe is correct, who was running off of T-Mobile and Sprint, which then combined to be the same company, will now only be on AT&T and kind of change everything. Will that be worth it? That's, what do you think of AT&T? I've heard good things, I've heard bad things. All mobile phone carriers kind of have all of their issues. Let me know what you think of AT&T down below in the comments. And I'll let you know what I think about this. Peloton, get into the video game industry, trying to launch an in-app video game where you roll a wheel down a line and you try to keep up with the pace of what it wants you to do and this looks like a terrible beat saber knockoff somehow mixed with audio surfer just it doesn't look very good i've seen a few videos even the person who's writing this article is like this was confusing and way worse than just like following an instructor and but the bright side is your child's not going to die on this i think all right the peloton just you know, there's that child who died on the treadmill, whether or not they're gonna get whacked in the head by one of these rolly video games. Probably not. That's a good chance no. And there's a new report coming out that's saying good chance, yes, AMD might be getting an Epic chip that might have HBM2 memory on it to combat Intel Sapphire Rapids, which will have HBM memory on it to make things super fast in processing. This is not 100% confirmed. Just the report is that AMD is exploring whether or not to do this or if they're just going to keep on going with their 3D vCache technology where they can stack that or if they can somehow find a way to combine both of these with the cache being stacked and really fast, but then also having HBM2 memory on there somehow. Details to come, but it's 
looks like it might be in the works. And what's also in the works are lower end graphics cards and a new report coming out from Fudzilla saying that AMD is looking to release the 6600 and 6600 XT upcoming on August 11th, which is just in a few weeks. No firm prices as of yet, but it's expected to be under $400 considering that the 6700 XT is supposed to go for right around 479. I'd expect the 6600 XT to slot in at that 379 and then the 6600 potentially maybe be in that 299 price point. Also being stated is that this single card mock-up that you can see here down below is actually not going to be real. That's just a marketing thing that AMD has and they're just going to exclusively sell these 6600 series cards through their AIB partners. And AMD better sell these parts to me directly, all right? I've had enough of having to go to eBay and order stuff from Hong Kong or go to Office Depot and rip an APU out of that system or go to Best Buy and rip an APU out of a system that didn't even have a display out on the motherboard even though it had an APU in the gosh dang system. I'm tired of this crap, AMD. Just let me buy it from you directly. Lower end chips coming from AMD according to new reports that are coming out. A Ryzen 5 4500, Ryzen 3 4100U as well as an Athlon Gold 4100 GE. The 4500 expected to replace the 3500, which is six core, six threads. The Ryzen 3 4100 expected to replace the Ryzen 3 3100, which is four cores and eight threads. And then that 4100 GE will have four cores, four threads, and then a Vega 3 compute unit GPU on there for really low end office production stuff that you might need to get done where you do need some accelerated graphics, but not into the tune of actually doing anything really with it. All of these chips should exist. AMD, sell them to us. It's still only going to be Zen 2. That's totally fine. All right. Give us the Ryzen 5 4500 for like a buck 79. I'll take that. The Ryzen 3 4100 109. That'd be great. I'd love to see all of these on retailers. All right. No system integrators. You, I mean, there can be system integrators. I'm okay with both, but I want retail. AMD, do you hear me? All right. I know I'm just a small little customer that you don't care a pittance about. Sell these to us, please. That's what Intel's saying to Global Foundries. Sell me, sell me to, to sell you to me. I want you, Global Foundries. Come here, baby. Go watch yesterday's episode of Hot News where we're talking about how Intel's just trying to slop up all of AMD's sloppy seconds. See you tomorrow, my friends. Cheers.